Hello everyone and welcome back to the Film Score Podcast. I've got a special Halloween episode for you all where I talk with a vampire. Well, an ex-vampire. My guest today is Rostam Butmonglidge, or as he's often mononymously known, Rostam. One of the founding members of Vampire Weekend, who also has writing and production and a number of other credits for musicians like Charlie XCX... Heim, and Frank Ocean, and, more importantly for our purposes, his several film and TV scoring credits, including what we spend most of our conversation talking about, his score for the new film The Persian Version. And it's an interesting score because it features some classic Iranian musical elements, as well as musical aspects of the 60s and 80s and various styles and genres as this film moves between the United States and Iran and goes through time from, I think, the 60s to the early 2000s. And of course, there's a very cool cover of Cyndi Lauper's Girls Just Want to Have Fun with a very Iranian take on it. It's pretty cool. And of course, Rossum and I get into a few other topics. A lot of our conversation focuses around the Iranian and Persian aspects of the film, the music, and Rostam's own identity, as well as the larger Iranian diaspora, at least in the United States. And I'll apologize a little bit if I sound off. I'm just getting over a cold, but I don't think it's affected any of my interviews. So you just have to have bared with me for these two minutes or so. Now, have a fun Halloween and sit back and I hope you enjoy. Rostin, thank you so much for joining me today. How have you been? I've been good. Yeah? I mean, it's got to be, you've obviously had a really successful band solo producing career to date. And you've done a a bit of TV scoring as well, but it's got to be exciting kind of getting more into the the film scoring world as well. Yeah, I've always felt about scoring. I don't think a lot of people know this about me, but in some ways I felt like quite serious about scoring films right when I graduated college. And my first job out of college was working for a composer named Craig Wedren. Hmm. And Craig gave me he set me up with a computer um, that had all these sounds that I, I had never used before. And that was also the time that I was producing the first Vampire Weekend album. And so I, I just chucked all these sounds that I'd never had before into that Vampire Weekend record. And it turned out Craig had a huge influence on that record because I'd always wanted to have, you know, Mellotron flute. And all of a sudden I had it. I had access to better quality harpsichord samples than I'd ever had before, and those made their way in. So it was definitely interesting how film scoring sort of informed my work as a producer, basically from the outset of my career. Interesting. And how did you get to that point of working with Craig and knowing from that relatively early age that that was something you were interested in? Because I think for a lot of people... Heck, a lot of people don't even know that it's a a career that exists. Yeah, I I think I always loved film. I always loved music. And I always loved movie music. And uh, I always felt like there was a lot of power in something like the Batman theme, Mm. which I would, as a kid, like sit and play on piano and improvise all the places you could go with that theme, like... You know, if you sit down at at the piano and you start playing the Batman theme, you can actually kind of resolve to about a hundred different chords on the last chord. I grew up watching Batman the Animated Series. I grew up listening to the 1989 Batman film, which that was very seminal for me. So I've always loved the way that in the film score, you can take a theme and you can harmonically sort of manipulate the emotional resonances it's something that i love about about song music i love that you can sort of change the chords or the last chorus and all of a sudden there's all this new meaning that arrives from reharmonizing something so i guess i've always felt like scoring 
and songwriting and production and composition were connected. And for me, as somebody who studied music theory as a teenager into my college experience where I majored in music, I've always felt like there's something powerful about how sort of music theory informs emotion. Is that something that you had prior opportunities come up to do? Just because, like, look, if you're if you're a, a very small indie musician, it's one thing. But obviously, time with Vampire Weekend, your solo stuff, you're producing for tons of big name artists as well. Being a big name with the ability to kind of work with so many different sounds seems like a really good fit for the scoring world. And obviously, I'm. it's not like this is your very first film, but was media scoring something that chances came up and you, you didn't jump on it or it wasn't the right fit, or, or has it really been more prevalent more lately? The reason that I said yes to this project was because I did very much feel an emotional connection to it. And I felt like there was no one else who could capture the Iranianness of the story and the Americanness of the story. And I felt kind of uniquely tasked with honorably carrying out what Mariam's script and her directing had set out to achieve, which is to tell a story that is both Iranian and American. And I felt like if an Iranian American doesn't score this movie, then it's a sad day in the world and I and outside of that I felt very moved by the story even from the roughest rough cut that I saw the movie moved me to tears so I did sort of feel like a calling with this project it felt like something that I I really did want to commit my time to I guess what I'm saying is like yeah there's there've been projects that I've done because I like the collaborators I often kind of feel like that's always what's guiding me as a producer, as a composer, as a songwriter, it really is about my collaborators. And I don't, yeah, I don't see such a huge divide between scoring, songwriting, production. To me, it's all kind of like, it's all interrelated. And, uh, you know, I enjoy having a life that lets me do all of it. And I think that's, that's often a big piece that people getting into film scoring that it takes them by surprise is the amount of collaboration or the fact that they'll put a cue out and the director comes back or you know the studio whomever comes back and is like no we've got this like this sound is totally wrong we've got to change this we've got to change that but like what you're saying producing someone else's album or song or working with three four other people in a band is there's a lot of similarities there so i imagine that type of collaboration has to, for you, and at this point, be something you're pretty used to. Yeah, I, I definitely think that as a producer, your job is to realize the artist's vision or realize a shared vision that you and the artist arrive at. And sometimes that involves writing a song from scratch, and sometimes it involves taking something that someone else started and carrying it on, carrying it to its final stage. When composing for film, I really feel like your job is to be in service of the director's vision. And I do kind of think like, if it does not bring you pleasure to do that, then don't do it. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't do the work of film scoring. You can come in with your ideas and your notions and your artistry and your creativity but, but as soon as you feel like something that you wanted to be in the score isn't getting its chance, then I think that you have the wrong mindset. Like you really have to go to this place where you recognize that you're in service of the director and your creativity is in service of the director and in service of the story. With that in mind then, what was that collaboration with Miriam like from the early days and then as you were more involved in the the composing the writing process what were your discussions with her well with a movie like this where there's the iranian element and the american element and it's about a family moving from iran to brooklyn it's very much a balance of persian music and western music and how 
light is your touch with the Persian stuff? How light is your touch with the American stuff? At the outset, I think I sort of pursued a, a more, like, I thought the whole score should be ethnic. And that's not really what Mariam had in mind. And I quickly realized she was right. She was like, you know, at this point, the family's been living in Brooklyn for at least a decade. So the score should reflect that they've westernized it in ways. You know, you can't do this like super ethnic score at this moment. And I think that made a lot of sense to me. I think that's something that's so interesting, watching the film, hearing the score, and then like, and this is going all the way back, hearing or seeing films that take place in the Middle East, in Persia, in, you know, Iran, that don't have someone who has a, a familiarity or a sensitivity to that culture or those regions, because I think it, it often and easily does break down into these musical cliches, and there are parts in the film that are set in Iran in like the 60s or 70s, and I think quite often you just are going to hear something that's like these Persian classical instruments. And while I think like as an American audience, that gives us a sense of place. Those are instruments that might be like 1500 years old. And is that really the sound of the 60s? Well, for me, I, I, I'm always very sensitive to this idea that like when we hear Persian music, it always sounds sad. And mm -hmm. that's not the reality because there is a, a mode in Persian music, which is called Ras Panjga, which is pretty joyful in its own way. So that's a mode that I lean on a lot because I don't want ethnic music to always sound sad or dramatic or lonely or dark. I think ethnic music should encapsulate a spectrum of feeling. And it is something that I'm sensitive to. Well, and, and I mean, it's something in, in the film as well where like, it's obviously an array of emotion, but there are a number of scenes where joyful music is important. Like early on when their Layla is sneaking in cassettes into Iran and they're like listening to Cyndi Lauper and everyone is in this courtyard dancing. And I think that shows how integral having a, a joyful side of music is to, I was, I was going to yeah. say to Iranians, but like it's, integral to everyone yeah and one of the the last things that i was tasked with doing scoring this film was to make a quote-unquote persian version of girls just want to have fun where this movie closes with a dance sequence where you get a version of girls just want to have fun that you've never heard before and it's the synthesis of western pop music and persian classical music and there was weeks left before the score had to all be handed in. And Mariam came in and she was like, I'm also going to need you to uh, make a version of Girls Just Want to Have Fun. That was actually probably my favorite thing that we did for the score, even though in some ways it's not an original piece of music. I think it's a synthesis that's something that has never existed before. You talking about the decision of having a heavy hand or a light hand on... Persian influences in the score itself. How did you approach that version of Girls Just Want to Have Fun? In Persian, there's something called Shishasht, which is 6-8. It's like a traditional rhythm that you hear on drums. But we kind of found a way to sort of combine that and integrate that with a 4-4, like Western 80s synth pop drum beat. Instead of having them sort of like trade off moments or battle, it's kind of like they coexist in this really cool polyrhythmic way. And then I had my friend Amir Yagmai come in and he played the synth solo from Girls Just Want to Have Fun on a Yali Tambor. And then we had another tar player come in named Merdad Arabi and he came and he, we had him improvise both on the dombak, which is a lambskin drum, and on the Persian tar. So he was improvising these ancient Persian classical melodies, basically over girls just want to have fun. <laughs> was there a part of you that thought 
how is this combination going to work or will it even work? No, because I have actually brought together Persian music and Western music in songs. It was something that I did a few times on the third Vampire Weekend album. It's something I did on my first solo record, Half Light. And yeah, it's something that I've done. I've understood for a long time, like what are these sort of strains that can be woven together? Like a lot of Persian music is improvising melody over the drone of a fifth. Hmm. And interestingly, that's something that's very common in, in pop music is to have the fifth represented in every chord in a sequence, like the droning fifth and the tonic and, and dominant. So yeah, like I guess I feel like my whole life I've been sort of taking note of the ways that Persian music and Western music can be integrated, and I've been doing it. I think you'd mentioned that that sort of approach is also on is it on, on your third album, which is... Well, the, the third Vampire Weekend album. Yeah, there's a couple songs. There's a song called Worship You, where I did a synth solo that also has elements of Ras Panjgah in the synth solo. There's a song called Young Lion, where my piano melody is synthesized from all these Persian melodies that I grew up listening to. It's not referencing a specific Persian melody, but it's definitely inspired by a lot of the music that I heard as a kid. I'd seen you mention that that sort of approach is also going to be more prevalent in the next Rostam solo album. Oh, yes. Yes, that is something I have. I'm working on that a lot, but I'm not at a place where it's like the end is... Mm in sight so it's definitely in a stage of like i have these goals you know i think that's a good that's a way that i work oftentimes is i try to create some goals and then write an album with those goals in mind on my second solo album change phobia i wanted to incorporate jazz and not every song on the album incorporates jazz but that was the goal so with this next record that I'm making, a goal is to sort of incorporate Persian music, but I don't know if it's going to be every song, hmm. but I'm, I'm going to try. Has scoring the Persian version then, obviously you've mentioned it before, like this is something that you've done throughout your entire career, but has this been one more way for you to practice and explore that as you're also like simultaneously working on this next album as well? Yeah, definitely. I, I def Well, I, fe I felt prepared in a way, like I said before, like I felt like I was the right person to score this film and that's why I cleared my schedule to do it. I feel like it's a continuous learning process. I always feel like I'm learning more about Western music and I, I'd like to think I'm learning more and more about Persian music. You know, I don't think there's ever a point where, you, where you've learned everything there is to know about any kind of music. That's why it's not boring to continue to make music. You know, that's why Bob Dylan's still writing songs. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure, too, having different collaborators as well, both producing solo albums, scoring, has to continue to make things interesting, too. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But I do want to go back to something you've mentioned a couple times about your feel that you are the right person for this. You had You had a quote from, I want to say maybe January or something, where you said, for so many of us Iranians born in America, Iran stays just out of reach. It's through art and culture that we reconnect with it, something my parents have made their life's work since before I was born. I saw that, and I think that so much showed how personal this project was. Now that it's completed, did it succeed as one more way for you to connect and reconnect with Iran? Well, yeah, you know, my parents were actually, they weren't able to come to Sundance, but they were able to watch the movie during Sundance through the online mm. festival. Yeah, I was very curious about what they would think about the movie because also my parents are pretty critical. They're tough, you know, <laughs> as you'd expect, right? Like, I don't know. I feel like all of us that are driven to create, we usually have tough parents that had a lot of opinions and I was nervous about what they would think, but they loved the movie and they connected with it. And that was meaningful to me because I did think a lot about my mom. My mom had a really interesting experience leaving Iran at age 19, 
having never left the country before and arriving at the University of Southern Oklahoma in 1968. And her English was not amazing, to put it lightly. And it was the heartland in the late 60s. So like, yeah, I think I think what this movie does really beautifully and why I hope a lot of Iranian Americans connect with the movie and I hope that every person can connect with the movie, but specifically for Iranian Americans, I think the movie like takes us to this place that we couldn't get to in another way. Like I've never actually been able to go to Iran, but I, I think even for Iranian Americans who have been able to go to Iran, I feel like there's no way that we could really know what it was like to grow up in Iran in the 50s and 60s because it was such a different time and such a different place. I just, I feel like on a lot of levels, we just can't comprehend it, you know? And I think that's true for Americans to some degree, but I think for Iranian Americans, it's true on a larger scale. I mean, it's just like, we really can't exactly understand what, we can't fathom what our parents' lives were like, and we really can't fathom what our grandparents' lives were like, because they were so deeply different from ours. All of that, or the the sequences in the film that take place in Iran in the 60s, you said your parents, your mom are critical, like that resonated and, and you know held true to some extent for her, for them? Well, my parents are critical because they're artists, and they have strong opinions. Not everyone in their family, I think, in quite the same way. But <laughs> my, you know, my mom writes cookbooks. My dad is her editor and co-publisher. The two of them collaborate constantly, and they're sort of always refining. My mom's always revising her recipes. She's always revising her books. She's always looking at them with an eye towards improving them. And it's been. 30 plus years of doing that. So yeah, I, I think it's I think it's unique to I, I wasn't saying my parents are critical because they're Iranian. I was saying my parents yeah, are critical yeah, yeah. because they're artists. And you know, even like the word opinionated is something that I've more recently become familiar with as a word because in my family, nobody doesn't have an opinion. That's just not the norm. Everybody has an opinion, everybody shares their opinion. Are there any, whether it's for your score here or more broadly, are there any, for you, particularly memorable criticisms or opinions that they've had on your work? No, actually. I think they're very moved by my work. My mom has often said her favorite of my songs is Wood, which is the song where I like really set out to synthesize elements of Persian music and Western music. I think my parents... They've always wanted me to be creatively happy. Hmm. That's kind of what what they've cared about the most. Do you think that kind of stems from their own roles as artists and working in the arts too? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. They but yeah, they have a unique relationship to it because it's very much within their ecosystem as husband and wife. They're each other's closest collaborator. Interesting. On collaboration, you, know, you you had done an album with, I think, Hamilton Lighthouser. And mm -hmm. one of those songs, A Blackout, comes up in the film. It actually really struck me because it's in a sequence in the 60s in Iran. And although it's a song that came out, let's say, 50 years afterwards, it really fits. And I think quite often anachronistic music can be jarring for people. And yet there it sits really well and really heightens the emotion. Was that a choice of yours to have that song in, or was that uh, a different discussion? No, it, it, the first time I saw the film, it really shocked me to hear that song. It took me by surprise. It was put in from the edit. Hmm. I don't know if, if it was Mariam's idea or the editor's idea, but yeah, it took me by surprise. But I really thought it worked. I think probably the reason it worked is because that song is in some ways inspired by Leonard Cohen. So it makes sense that it would harken back to another era and another time. I mean, I, I think it also speaks to, like in some ways, a, a universality or like a timelessness of music where it's not long prior to that song coming in. You're hearing, you know, Gugush on the radio. And it's like these two very different eras. And yet 
they sit well somewhat back to back. Yeah, I mean, I hadn't even thought of that, but yeah, it makes sense that the '60s was such a like a beautiful time for music in the West, in the East, kind of everywhere. I feel like we're all kind of like continually inspired by the music that was made in the 1960s. Yeah, which I love, and it's it's something that you you hear regularly. You know, not just the '60s inspiration, but like we we seem to have these really tiny epochs of current music being very visibly or audibly inspired by a particular time like you had across music and like in film music for instance a huge 80s revival over the last eight ten years or so and that's i think simmering down and something else i'm sure will take its place yeah yeah i mean i think in this film it felt necessary to really try to take us back to the 80s harmonically and in terms of sound palette when things were happening in the 80s like I felt like I wanted us to go back there it was tricky to like think about like what what going too far might be Mm. I'd like to think I did it in a tasteful way but who knows we need some time (laughs) my one person's opinion it, it was tasteful and restrained it's not like you just were battering us with these old synth lines or something yeah i mean i think it's interesting it's like my in some ways i think like a purely string score like a string orchestra score is in some ways like what i consider beautiful like the most beautiful so putting in like 80s drum machines is like the last thing that i (laughs) think to do but this one needed it and yeah i think mariam she really helped guide me in terms of knowing like where to integrate 80 signifiers, for example, or things that were more Western or things that more were more Persian. So as we wrap up, I realize we're, you know, just about out of time. Do you have thoughts or maybe it's out of your control of having a score release for the film or, you know, even a, a choice cut of songs? Oh, no, it's happening. It's going to happen on the day. So it's something I'm actually, we're like working on it upstairs in my studio right now. So um, it will involve like combining some of the cues and then trying to make it a cohesive listen as opposed to like having the score play out in chronological order, which honestly wouldn't, it won't make for a good listen. So my preference is to put girls just want to have fun at the top and then kind of go from there and, and see what flows nicely. But yeah, it's it's cool to think about an album that you can just play, you know? Yeah. And experience like kind of as an album as opposed to as a score. Well, and I I love that because they're, you know, competing schools of thought, but I always love when a a film or a show's composer takes the time to go, let's cut some tracks because they're not going to be a good listening experience. Let's merge some. Let's move things around so this can be its own experience, give you, you know, its own curated journey instead. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I'm intrigued to to hear that uh, when it drops. Yeah, it should, it should be out October 20th, so. Awesome. Hoping other people listen in too because it is such a an interesting mix and something that, like we've talked about, you know, a lot of those elements, a lot of the Persian elements in particular, are things that we, at least in, in the U.S. and the West, don't hear. And the more I think people are exposed to those different sounds, the better. Yeah, I, I, yeah and, I, and I really hope people who like grew up in Iran will hear the music and feel like it's connecting for them. You know, that's my hope, that people just feel something from the experience of watching the film and hearing the music. So... Thank you very much for this. It was was fun to talk about. And uh, I look forward to more people being able to see the film. Yeah, and thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks again.